if you are going for holiday for a week okay la two weeks okay la two weeks can still six months there how six months who is going to sit at the locum chair for six months So, every doctor must have a plan B, just in case you lose the ability to work as a doctor. You must have a plan B. If you do not have a plan B, good news, you got time. Because you are still well and you are still fit to work. So, how much, income should I, should, how much income should I be protecting? Should I work? This is a golden question. My, my, my suggestion would be the number of years of your annual income Right, supporting your last child to the age of 23. So if you have a family like me, I have a four-year-old child. So if I want to protect my income, I will protect until for 20 years. Four years until 23, 20 years, I will buy or I will prepare some money to protect the income for 20 years. Or in general, if you don't have children, you're just starting out, or you have one child or or, or you, all your children is halfway through college, then it's 10 years of your annual income. That's the amount. So put it, put it in context. I, I met a, a cardio, uh, not cardiologist. I met, a, a, I met an ophthalmologist recently. His annual income is about 80,000 to 90,000 annually. I'm oh, sorry, monthly income is 90,000. So times 12, he makes about 1.1 million. So how much he needs? He needs about 10 years income, about 10 million. No? So if you are making 30,000, then it's three, four million. No? Depends on how much income you make, right? So I'm going to show you uh, three simple ways to protect your income. Let's go. What is the three simple way? Number one is strict and systematic savings. For government doctors, I would suggest you to save 30% of your income on strict behavior. Strict means don't use that 30% and go and buy a BMW or Mercedes. Really strict. If you make 10,000, put 3,000 away. My wife is watching and she's doing more than that. Right? So you see, you must do 30% of your strict of your income to put aside for rainy days just in case things happen. Put aside this money. Number one, when you put aside this money, it becomes an emergency fund for you just in case you're unfit to work. Number two, if you do not need it, means you work until 60 and happily retire, balloon, flower, confetti, everything, then it becomes your second retirement fund after EPF. Nothing is lost, okay? Put aside 30% and save it up. Don't buy whatever that people are asking you to buy. Just put aside this money. So it will help you in the long term. It will take time, but it will help you, right? So for private doctors, I would suggest 50 to 60% of your income as a strict savings because your income bracket is much higher than the government doctors. A private doctors, a government doctors makes maybe a, prof, a, a what you call this, a specialist may about make probably include allowances uh, 15 to about 25,000. If they do locum, 30,000. But the private doctors can go from 100,000 to 200,000 to 300,000. That depends on how hard he works. So if you have that kind of income, you cannot spend everything on uh, how to spend everything. When you have a hundred thousand, how to spend a hundred thousand a month? You cannot because you have no time. The problem doctors, they have no time to spend. If you don't have the time to spend, you must save the money. Lo. Save 50 to 60% of your income as a strict savings. For rainy days, for what? For business, for emergency business sinking fund. Just in case the person becomes unfit to work. Alright? Emergency business sinking fund. For the clinic for the business that you're running, private doctors, or as a second retirement. If you work until 65, 70, and you confetti happen, retire, party, everything, then it becomes your private retirement fund. Nothing is lost. There's no loss to it. So number two, I would suggest private doctors uh, for private clinics, uh, build a system around your practice. I can see a lot of private doctors and private clinics they work day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out. They never think. They just work on it. You go into the clinic, you see patient, you go home. You come into the clinic, you see patient, you go home. On a precedence of that, you will never get sick one. Or you never had an accident. And that is a very dangerous assumption, uh, my friend. Why? Because luck might not just be always with you. 
what happens if the person becomes sick suddenly and he cannot work? Who will take over the doctor's chair? That's the next question. Locum. If you're going for holiday for a week, okay la. Two weeks, okay la. Three weeks, can still. Six months there, how? Six months, who is going to sit at the locum chair for six months? Do you think the young guy who sit there doing your locum stupid? He will open one next to you if he knows business is very good, right now. So, one year how? Two years how? Who is going to sit there? So, my, pra- my, my suggestion is that you must build a system. Start behaving like a businessman if you own a private uh, practice. Start behaving like a businessman. Build a system and a franchise. There's so many uh, successful franchises in Malaysia. The Manuveron Group, you know, they are very, very successful. They give shares to young doctors to start clinic. But the big, big boss, the old doctor who started the first one, don't have to work anymore. Doesn't have to go and see patients, right now. Uh, the Optimax Group, you know, the owner is not a doctor, but the Optimax Group hires a lot of doctors to work. And, and doctors hire other doctors to work. You know, CVS and all these, these are very good, very, very famous franchise where the owners doesn't really have to do the hard work. Where they hire people to do their work, give them shares and do profit sharing. So you want to build a system, but more importantly, doctors, you must learn how to build a brand. Dr. Chan or Dr. Ng or Dr. Chin. These are brands that you can build on top. Right now. So you must learn how to build a brand so that your brand becomes famous. And when if you want to sell that brand of chain hospital, John Hopkins Hospital, just things like that. You want to sell that brand, that brand brings a name. The brand brings a commercial value. So you want to do that, build a brand. So after you've done that, then you want to hire younger doctors to run your brand, not run your clinic. Let me just be clear. You want a younger doctor to run your brand. So give example. If my wife, Dr. Noreen, wants to start a clinic, she will start a clinic focused on say children and mothers. So she'll build a brand around this name Dr. Norin Ho or Dr. Norin's clinic and build a brand around it and hire people to work for the brand then the person cannot take over your name cannot right now because the brand is so big already like Sanford so big right now and doctors works in Sanford for the brand so anything happens to you then if you have a franchise and a system around your practice you can sell it or you can let a professional manager or a GM to handle it then you can sit at home take care of yourself money will still comes in and you don't have to work right so by building a brand you want to be free build businesses if you really want to be free doctors please build businesses transfer the risk the third part third simple ways of actually getting around right protecting income is to transfer the risk do not take every risk if you are not transferring your risk you are taking risk to yourself third way medical legal professional indemnity insurance have you bought it now all government doctors must buy professional indemnity the private one are doing it but a lot of government doctors have not starting done uh, started to do it or they are still thinking how to do it call me if you do not know how to do it i can do it for you Professional indemnity insurance transfer the medical legal risk to the insurance company, right? Don't take it. Don't don't let a medical legal case you know, gone into you and make you bankrupt. It doesn't. It's not worth it. Number two, income protection policy. Have you have an income protection policy? You know, a policy that is designed to protect the income of a doctor. Do you know about it? Have anybody told you? If you do not know about it, we can share with you how to actually get around it and do it properly. Do you have enough life insurance and critical illness policy? To my surprise, a lot of government doctors, when they turn private, they are very inadequately insured. I have a doctor who turned private and make 50, 60,000 uh, uh, income a month, told me he owed, she, owed, she had not bought a policy before. That is a problem. You want to think about it, you know? If you have not taken anything, 
What happens to you if you're critically sick? What happens to your income? And if you're in private, who will take care of you? Do you think the hospital will be... Oh, all these big boys hospital, Subang, Sunway, will be kind enough to pay six months your salary? Pay one year your salary? Or tell you, don't worry, la, we'll take care of you for two years. What happened after two years? Nobody will do that. Why not? You know. If you stop working, you stop earning. That is a very big risk. So, learn how to do this, right? Professional uh, disability insurance. Do you have a professional disability insurance? Do you know that your right hand can be insured at 5 million with less than few thousand ringgit a year? Do you know your left hand can be protected at 10 million at a few thousand, not more than 10,000 ringgit a year? Do you know that your, your, your ability to continue to work can be protected? Do you know professionally your disability can be protected by an insurance policy by paying a fraction of it? If you do not know, we can show you how. How, how does it work?